This is Marilyn Burns. In this video, I describe a lesson I taught in a fourth grade class in which the students describe their strategies for figuring out the answer to 99 plus 17. After I wrote the problem on the board, I asked the students to figure out the answer in their heads. After giving them a few moments to think on their own, I had them check with a partner and then I asked the class to say the answer aloud together. This established that the correct answer was 116. Next I told them, what I'm interested in is hearing how you figured out the answer to see how many different strategies we used altogether. I called on Lauren to report first and she began. I did 99 plus 10 and that's 109. I recorded as she explained. Recording gives me the opportunity to connect students' thinking to appropriate math representations, here equations. Recording also helps others see how she thought. Lauren continued, then I did 109 plus 7 and got 116. The answer is 116. I asked if anyone had a question or a comment. Alessandra said she did it the same way, so I added her name to the board. Other hands popped up to make the same comment, but I shifted the conversation and asked who solved it a different way. I called on Jake. He began, I know that 9 plus any number is one less than the number you had. I was a bit flummoxed, not sure how to translate what Jake said into an equation, as I had done with Lauren, so instead I wrote down what he said. It's hard to think and teach at the same time, and I was buying some time here. I asked Jake to give me an example and he gave 9 plus 7 equals 16, pointing out that the 6 is 1 less than 7. Jake went on to explain that's how he knew the answer had to end in a 6. I wrote that down too. And he concluded, so I knew the answer had to be 116. I find that taking the time to record students' words is valuable because it slows down the conversation so that everyone has more time to think about the ideas being presented. Eliane reported next. She began by adding 9 plus 7, as Jake had done. Then she added 90 plus 10 and combined the partial sums 16 plus 100 to get 116. Lindsay began the same way by adding 9 plus 7. But then she added the 10 from the 17 onto the 16 to get 26 and then she finished by adding 26 plus 90. Lindsay wanted to offer another way, but I told her that I would come back to her and give others a chance to report first. I wrote the one next to her explanation to acknowledge that she had another way to share. Dylan reported next. He began by adding 100 plus 17. And then he subtracted one and explained, I was really only supposed to add 99 and 17. Then I returned to Lindsay. She began this time by adding 90 plus 17 to get 107. And then she added 107 plus 9 to get 116. Then Caleb explained his strategy. He began, 99 is one less than 100. Then he subtracted 1 from 17 and added the 1 onto 99 to get 100. And then he added 16 to 100 to get 116. After Caleb reported, no one had another way to suggest. We counted and saw that we had come up with seven different ways to figure out the answer to 99 plus 17. When I've done this same lesson with other classes, some students explain how they use the algorithm they learn, lining up the numbers vertically on their mental chalkboard. When this happens, I record the procedure on the board as another viable way, but that didn't occur in this class. I next told the students that I was going to show them video clips of four other students solving the same 99 plus 17 problem and their job would be to listen to how these students reason and see how they compared to the strategies they reported. These video clips are from individual interviews done for the math reasoning inventory and are available online. I'll give information about how to access them in my post. Each of these four students got the correct answer of 116 and each figured out the answer in a different way. First you'll watch Malika Scott interviewing Jada. What is 99 plus 17? 
Um, I know that 99 is the closest to 100, so 100 plus 17 is 117. Then to subtract 1 and 116 will be the answer. After the students watched the clip, I asked the class to look over the methods I had recorded and see if any of theirs matched what Jada did. I used think, pair, share to have them decide. They agreed that Jada's explanation matched what Dylan did. Next, you'll see Manuel being interviewed by Jesus Martinez. What is 99 plus 17? One hundred sixteen. And how did you figure out the answer? Um, one of it, it's because I started by adding the tens, mm -hmm. and then that gave me one hundred, and then I know that nine plus seven equals sixteen. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and then one hundred plus sixteen would equal one hundred sixteen. After we watched the clip, I again used the think-pair-share routine to have the class decide if Manuel did it the same way as anyone in our class. They agreed that his strategy matched Eliane's. Next, they watched Dina solve the problem, also interviewed by Jesus. What is 99 plus 17? Um, I take one from six, six, from 17 mm -hmm. so that I'd add it to 100, so it'd be 100 plus 16, and we can just add it 116. Okay. The students reviewed their strategies and agreed that Dina's strategy matched Caleb's. Finally, I showed the clip of me interviewing Amir. What is 99 plus 17? First, I would take away the 9, and so 90 plus 17 equals 107, and then 107 plus the 9 equals 116. Thank you. Amir's strategy matched what Lindsay had explained for her second method. What I'm looking for when talking with students, both during lessons and in one-on-one -on -one interviews, is how the students reason. This question I posted here is the litmus test. I feel that all of the students in the video clips used reasoning strategies that were appropriate to the numbers in the problem 99 plus 17.